Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at creating an email validation field, uh, which you could go ahead and implement into your for uh, into a uh, form on your website if you uh, require it. Um, the way it works is we click in here and we have this message saying go ahead type a valid email address. Uh, so when we go ahead and start to actually type a valid email address, uh, we have this feedback here which is just a span area. Uh, just feed us back some information about what we're typing inside this field. So at the moment it says that's not quite a valid email address. If I then go on and continue to type, um, you'll also see that um, something like Alex at PHP Academy uh, would be regarded as um, a valid email address. For example, it could be something like uh, local host here. Um, this is just the way that PHP um, validates email addresses with the filter var function. However, uh, you could then go on adapt it to check for um, a TLD at the end. Um, although .org then uh, still a valid email address. So we're concentrating on the jQuery side of this and we are going to be using PHP to build the back end that's actually going to uh, validate this form. Um, we're not actually using jQuery to validate it. So we're using PHP essentially to validate and then feed back the response from uh, you know the text that's been typed in here by the user um, back to the user. So whichever way you choose to validate, you can ap apply this to um, a variety of other different fields as well in a form. Uh, obviously you wouldn't go ahead and just copy and paste the code that we're about to write, but you could find a way to pick up on each of the fields uh, and validate them separately. Maybe create a global type for a field, for example, uh, text, and then supply it with a specific amount of data. However, for the purpose of this example application, we're looking at filtering an email address and feeding back information to the user. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to build um, our basic form. Uh, we also need to include ajax.js, which is the file that's going to handle all of our jQuery. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and a bit later on create a PHP file, which is going to be uh, you know, the file that processes all this information. Let's just take a look at our directory structure. We've got uh, this folder called JS where this Ajax file is located, uh, this one here, and obviously jQuery as well. We've already included jQuery into our page. However, we need to go ahead and include this Ajax.js file that I have open in my text editor, and that's the uh, jQuery that's going to handle uh, the events and everything inside of our, um, inside of our page as well as handling the Ajax post request. So that's that. Uh, we're going to go on later and create a file inside our PHP folder which is going to handle the requests sent by our Ajax.js file. So step one is to go ahead and include this Ajax file into our page. So I'm going to go ahead and create some script tags. The type is text forward slash JavaScript and the source is js forward slash ajax.js. So now that's included, we can start to create um, some jQuery code or write some jQuery code inside this ajax.js file. And that's gonna handle the form we're just about to create or the field that we're just about to create. So I'm gonna create a little label here, just saying email. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create an input field. Okay, so the input field type is going to be text. We're just uh, asking for the user to type text in. We're also then going uh, to uh, give this an ID, and that's just going to be email. Now, just one point I'd like to make. I am using HTML5, and you can actually give the uh, type um, email. So you can now uh, specify email from HTML5. They've created a validation here. However, what's happening is you're validating on the front end, and at the time of recording this video, uh, HTML5 is a touchy subject when it comes to browser support. But let's just open our browser and take a look at this example. If I was to go ahead and type Alex at PHP, um, and if I was to submit this form, let's just go ahead and create a submit button. Okay, so if I was to go ahead and submit this form with just say Alex in here, um, we have this, or we should do anyway, uh, it's because we're not using a form, let's just, there we are. 
Okay, so when I click submit, you see this, um, f you know, little div or whatever it would would be pops up, just saying please enter a, a, an email address. So um, HTML5 is now validating on the front end. Now the downfall to this that I've already explained is that HTML5, uh, you know, is you know not entirely compatible at the time of recording this video. So depending on when you're watching it, um, HTML5 is um, you know one of them things that is. Uh, not compatible with some browsers uh, in some areas. Uh, the other reason is is that backend validation is genuine, generally more reliable and uh, can be tailored um, with regards to you know what ex exactly what you want to look for. If you were to do everything in JavaScript, if you were to do all the email validation in JavaScript, uh, you would you know users would be able to get around this. So we need to validate in the backend somehow. So that's just a quick explanation as to why this example is in place. Um, we're going to keep this as type text just so the user can type some text in. And if you are choosing not to use HTML5, then this method will be, you know, useful to you. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's just refresh. We've already seen this somewhat. Now, the first thing that we need to do is when the user clicks into here, so when it becomes in focus, we need to display some text here.